Hi, it's Dr. Darren Schmidt at the Nutritional Healing Center of Ann Arbor. And uh, I had a video that I posted on my YouTube channel where I was being interviewed. And at the very beginning, I said, look, heart cells do not turn into cancer. You've never heard of heart cancer, have you? And uh, I've had a lot of people ask me, like, how does that happen? Like, what do I mean by that? So this video explains this. Why heart cells don't get primary malignant neoplasm or cancer. So you can have cancer somewhere in your body and it spreads to your heart or you can have a benign tumor in your heart but I'm talking about a malignant tumor that starts in the heart. That's the primary. That's what that means. So it's so rare that big major hospitals may only see one case of a primary malignant cancer in somebody's heart per year. And I, I read an, an interview online where a cancer heart oncologist only gets like two to three per year, and that's a specialty. There's no funding for heart cancer research. There's no walkathons for heart cancer research because it's so rare. So why is it so rare? I'm gonna explain the physiology so that you understand it. Now, before I made this um, video, I read a lot of articles on the internet why people think that heart cancer is very rare. There's not one single article that's correct. Now, the information that I have from here comes from a long time ago, 1926, 1931, 1962. They knew it back then, and it's been forgotten. Okay, now you've seen me do this um, lactic acid cycle before, hopefully, by watching my other videos. And I've expanded on it with this diagram right here. So there's things here that I haven't talked about regarding the lactic acid cycle. So here we have sugar being used by a cell as its fuel, and that creates lactate. Normal cells um, have a nice balance of lactate. It's not a problem. But once you have abnormal cells or an excess production of lactate or you have you know, other factors, you get a buildup of lactate and other toxins in the blood. This is in the blood. Then it becomes a problem. Okay, so sugar can cause excess lactate in the blood. And, you know, you can also use the word lactic acid, even though they're not the same, lactate, lactate and lactic acid. Um, they're used interchangeably in language, but the point is they're both, can, they, they're both toxic in excess and they both need to be cleaned out of the blood. So I'm going to use lactate and lactic acid interchangeably. So another aspect of burning sugar is you release one hydrogen that's acid. So lactate plus acid, lactic acidosis. Okay, now mold in the body, which is extremely common, ignored by medicine. Mold creates lactate. It also creates carbon dioxide. And it absorbs oxygen. It uses oxygen. So now you have too much waste in the blood and not enough oxygen. And then lastly here we have cancer cells. Cancer cells make lactate. And they also use lactate as a fuel. So we have three primary factors that can increase lactate and cause disease, cause problems. Now on this side we have the liver that's supposed to clean the, these toxins out and it converts lactate back into sugar. The primary nutrient that the liver uses to clean is vitamin B. Okay, now in 1931, Dr. Otto Warburg, the father of physiology, got the Nobel Prize. I'm gonna read exactly what he got it for. I wrote a little note here. You probably can't read it. I'm just gonna read it to you. It says, for his discovery of the nature and mode of the respiratory enzyme. What is the respiratory enzyme? It's vitamin B. Okay, now, by 1940, they knew that there were 50 to 100 B vitamins. And they're just subsets, and they, uh, they um, complex with each other to form uh, more and different B vitamins. Okay, so it's not just vitamin B, but it's B1 through B100. Now, um... So now it's not just the liver that cleans this garbage out, it's all the cells. So let me give you a little history on the study of detoxification. Um, back in the early 1930s, Dr. Otto or Dr. Henry Harrower said that various organs like the thyroid and the liver and the adrenals have what they, he called a deaminating effect. And what that meant is they clean the blood. Okay, now the knowledge on detoxification was very minimal at the time. They just knew that you got to have a strong thyroid, strong thymus gland, strong endocrine organs to have clean blood. So now fast forward to the 1960s, and the pharmaceutical companies saw that 
the liver was cleaning medications out of the body before the medications could have an effect on the body. So they found what they called uh, phase one and phase two detoxification pathways in the liver. And that's still, you know, being studied and utilized. And it's not like, a, uh, it's not unknown that it's phase one, phase two detoxification pathways. So uh, later, after they first discovered it in the liver, then they found it in the cells of the small intestine, and then they found it in the cells of other organs. And basically, every cell in the body has phase one and phase two detoxification capabilities. So you're not just cleaning the liver, you want to clean all the cells from head to toe. Okay, so now if this isn't working, if you're deficient in B vitamins, your detoxification pathways um, are not well nourished, then you get an increase in these toxins in your blood on this side, and that causes disease right there. Okay, so you may have heard this before. I expanded on it a little bit, so keep just bear with me. We're, we'll get through this. Now, I'm going to give you some information that initially may not seem related to what I'm going to end with, but just follow me. So there's a theory that the increased LDL causes heart disease. Okay, I'm calling it an old theory. Now, you can have heart disease, and you can have high LDL. It doesn't mean that the LDL is causing the heart disease because a lot of people have normal LDL and they still have a heart attack. Okay, there's a new theory which I like and a lot of this work came from Ivor Cummins. I'm a big fan of Ivor. He's an engineer and his website is uh, fatemperor.com. So he's saying that increased insulin and other people say this too, it's in the research, increased insulin is heart disease. Now I can buy that, okay, but it's not the direct correlation with heart disease according to what I've figured out, what I've read in the studies that I've done. Here's what reality is. So if you have high insulin and glucose, that prevents the oxidation of lactate slash lactic acid. I've been saying for two years that the mechanism of chronic disease, including heart disease and cancer, etc., and diabetes, is lactic acidosis. And so if you have high insulin, high glucose, your, your body will not get rid of lactic acid. And you get a buildup of lactic acid, that's lactic acidosis. Now, I did a video called, You're Probably Diabetic Unless You Cycle Ketosis. And from the work of Dr. Kraft, 80 to 90% of Americans over the age of 14 have high insulin. So technically they have type two diabetes. Now, it doesn't mean they have high sugar. Um, having high sugar is a late manifestation of type 2 diabetes. The first and early manifestation is high insulin. So if you've got a 20-year-old person that has high insulin and they eat a bunch of sugar, they're just building up the lactic acid in their body and they start to get anxiety and they start to get maybe some muscle tightening up in here. Okay, so... I wrote this up, increased lactic acid and other waste products in the blood, uh, they push out oxygen, so you get a deficiency of oxygen, forces cells to convert to lactate fermentation. Okay, this, and that, that's this, here's lactate. Okay, if, at first it's being, it's being released by cells by burning sugar, but then, it be, it's, then it's used by cells as a fuel, that's cancer. So I did a double arrow right here. Cancer makes lactate, and lactate is used by cancer as a fuel. So I'm, sh I'm telling you how cancer is made right now. Okay. So increase lactate, decrease oxygen, the cells start to starve, and instead of dying, they convert over to lactate uh, fermentation or lactic acid fermentation. This process moves at a rate of 10% per hour. So it can take a cell 10 hours to become uh, fully uh, lactic acid fermenting. So now Dr. Otto Warburg has said this, uh, he's, at one point he said six hours, he also said nine hours, he also said 20 hours. So it may take six to 20 hours for a cell to convert to becoming a cancer cell. 
Now, a heart cell doesn't have 10 hours to sit back and spend its energy to convert over to lactate fermentation. It doesn't have the time since it's always beating. It has to keep using its energy to keep beating. Therefore, it cramps and it stops because the cell is starving. The heart cell is starving. And imagine an athlete that's sprinting and uh, the, the, the leg muscles are telling the athlete, stop, I can't take it anymore. So the athlete just stops and walks it off and the leg muscles chill out, they relax and they start using oxygen again. But the heart muscle, it can't chill out and relax. It has to keep beating. So it cramps up and then it stops. That's a heart attack. So therefore, it cramps, stops, rather than turning into a cancer for the alternative fuel production of lactate fermentation. So it's a matter of time. That's why you, never, you hardly ever see a primary malignant neoplasm because the heart can't chill out and can convert over to uh, lactate fermentation. So if you Google, why isn't there heart cancer, you're going to see a bunch of articles that I've probably read, and the truth is, I have not seen one article that's correct. You have to go back to the 1920s and 30s to get the correct information and the correct inf uh, physiology by the best of the best during that time. And you've heard me say before in other videos, that information's been forgotten I'm uncovering it for your benefit to uh, get better. And in order to stop this cycle, you stop the sugar, um, get into ketosis. Ketosis lowers the insulin. It, it lowers the sugar in the blood. Therefore, your body can now get rid of the lactic acid. And make sure you're taking B vitamins. My favorite is Cataplex B from Dr. Royal Lee. And there's many other aspects of this that we can address to reverse your health condition. So if you like this information, give me a thumbs up, share, and subscribe. And if you want our help, you, just, you have to email intake at the nhcaa.com. That email is right now at the very end of this video. All right, thanks. Bye.